Hello world hippies and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the best places in the entire world for you stargazers out there to have an amazing vacation and look up at the stars. Before we get started, don't forget to follow on Facebook. If you are on YouTube, hit the big red button and follow on Instagram at World Hippie Travel. So you love stars, you love the night sky. Well, then that makes you a stargazer. I'm a stargazer. I absolutely love looking up at the night sky. And one of my favorite things to do is when I'm on vacation to look up at the sky and to just marvel over the beautiful galaxies and just oh everything that comes along with, with stargazing. Uh, so I thought I'd do a video today to share with you destinations that you can go to that are uh, the darkest places on the planet where you will have the least light pollution, the darkest skies, and are able to actually see the heavens above. Oh my God. I love stars. So if you're a stargazer, listen up. I have done research and compiled a list of the darkest places on earth certified by the International Dark Sky Association, or IDA. If you go to darksky.org, they are a 503C nonprofit organization that works to preserve the darkest areas on Earth uh, for mankind to still be able to look up and see the stars with less light pollution. So if you go to their website and scroll down uh, about mid-page, you will see international dark sky places. When you go into that link, it'll take you to the dark sky places page and then scroll down a little bit more and you will find international dark sky reserves and international dark sky sanctuaries. The reserves are dark areas that are that are near light polluted areas. But the sanctuaries are the very darkest places on earth. So I'm going to share with you these locations and the price of what it'll take to get there. Um, I'm using skyscanner.com to find the flights. And all flights are calculated going out of JFK in New York City from May 13th to 20th. So that week of May. And also remember these prices will change based on where you fly out of and time of year that you go and availability. There will also be extra costs for any guides that you hire or any extra flights that you need to take or let's see, any transportation to get from the airport to a really remote area. There's all those costs that will be involved but for the most part, for this video, I'll share with you the cost to actually get nearest to that location. So the first on our list uh, of the reserves is Brecon Beacons National Park in Wales, an area of the United Kingdom. Now it says that it is situated in the south part of Wales, so it's very uh, sparsely populated and they've actually started to replace the lighting with lighting that doesn't obstruct, uh, I guess doesn't make a lot of light pollution, special lights or something like that. But it is a really good area to go. It's very dark. You can see all the sky at night and it's really easy to get to if you are already in the UK. So go on out to Brecon Beacons National Park in Wales. And how much does it cost to get over there? Well, using skyscanner.com, I found a ticket price for $662. So that's a really good bargain if you're ready to spend some cash and get over to the UK so you can see amazing night skies. Our next reserve is Namibreb. Yeah, Namibreb. Namibreb. Oh my God. Namibrand Nature Reserve in Namibia. Um, that is in South Africa or the southern part of Africa. They're extensive deserts, so you do not have a lot of light pollution at all. It's one of the darkest places on the planet. Um, it's somewhere that I would love to go. I've always wanted to, to go to Namibia uh, just for the deserts, but now that I've found that you can actually see the whole Milky Way, 
uh, all the distant galaxies and shooting stars. It'll be a very interesting place to go to. But it says that uh, the reserve is one of Africa's largest private nature reserves. And it was established to conserve unique ecology and wildlife in southwestern uh, Namibia and in the Namib Desert. This one will be a little trickier to get to. You're gonna have to fly out of New York and you'll probably have to connect, but you'll get to Wind, Windhoek. It's W-I-N-D-H-O-E-K. Uh, Windhoek, uh, Namibia. It's the nearest city. Let's see here, uh, British Airways has that flight. But it's for 966 bucks. And when you land, then you'll have to have a guide to take you out into the desert. So it will be a day or two that you will have to be traveling but it should be so amazing underneath such a dark sky with a huge, huge nightlight called the stars. Our next location is called Iraqi McKenzie uh, Dark Sky Reserve in New Zealand. So this is very exotic. It's very far out there down in New Zealand. So if you live in Australia, it's gonna be easy for you to get to, but if you're in the United States, Get ready to pay something to get there because that's the, it's a long ways away but let's see here darksky.org says that it is in the cook national park and the mckenzie basin of new zealand's south island and nearby is the mount john observatory so if an observatory put their place there then it's probably pretty dark but it's new zealand so you know there will be beautiful mountains and lakes uh, there's not a lot of light pollution because New Zealand isn't heavily populated. So it will definitely be an astronomer's dream and a stargazer's dream as well because the night sky will have to be just <laughs> To get there, you will fly from New York and this will probably make more sense if you fly out of Los Angeles, but just for this video, I did it out of New York so you'd have to connect uh, in Los Angeles. Go on skyscanner.com and look up prices from Los Angeles. But from New York, it's going to cost $1,743 and it will take about 24 hours. So depending on how long you want to travel will affect the price, of course. But so around 1,700 bucks. When you get there, you will land in Queenstown. It's a little pricey. Um, I'm sure you can find different deals, especially if you go at different times of the year. But all in all, that is a good price to go somewhere like New Zealand to see a galaxy. Next, let's look at the International Dark Sky Sanctuaries. Now, sanctuaries, like I said before, are some of the most absolute darkest places on our planet. So they will be the very best, hands down, for you stargazers out there. Both the reserves and the sanctuaries have to meet special requirements to be certified by the darksky.org uh, network. Right now, we are going to look at Rainbow Bridge National Monument, and that is here in the United States. So it's going to be easy for everyone here in America to get to. If you're international, It'll probably cost you a little bit, but golly geez, can you imagine how magical it would be if you just bit the bullet, spent that money, and got over here to go to one of these darkest places on Earth. It says it is 65 hectares of land, or 160 acres, and it is the absolute, or one of the absolute darkest places on Earth. There is no light pollution at all. And you'll see all kinds of Jurassic era um, rock formations like the Rainbow Bridge and other cutouts um, done by Bridge Creek. It's near Page, Arizona. It's part of the U.S. National Park Service, so it is protected and it is also certified by Dark Sky, and I'm sure they're not going to let a lot of light pollution get anywhere near there. So that's very, very good. Let me see how much it will cost you if you fly out of New York. American Airlines 
in May they have a price that I found of $510. So you will be flying into Flagstaff, Arizona. You'll have to rent a vehicle then and drive on up north to Rainbow Bridge National Monument. But it's so worth it. If, if you have the money to spend and want to get there and get out and see these stars, it will be probably a very good thing to do. So the next place is probably on my list one of the darkest places on earth and it's called Gabriella Mistral and it is almost central Chile, South America. This place looks absolutely amazing and nearby you have an astronomy uh, observatory and you have 40 universities and, it's, and it says 40 international affiliates who operate cutting-edge professional astronomy facilities near uh, the 36,000 uh, hectare site. Oh my gosh, so, all, so in the middle of Chile is this area that all these scientists and governments work out of to observe the sky. So it's literally one of the darkest places on Earth, hands down. And in the early 1960s, the Chilean government made it solely an area where everything was dedicated to looking at the night sky. It's very protected. This area is in what is called the El Quai Valley. And so in order to go enjoy one of the darkest places, if not the darkest place on earth, you're going to have to do a little bit of finagling here. You have to get there. You are going to, let me look this up, from New York in May, flying to Santiago, Chile, you are going to pay about $844. And then when you get there, you're going to have to fly, uh, which I can't find any flights right now, fly to La Serena, which is a little town near the valley. And then from there, you'll have to get a guide in or rent a vehicle. You may need a guide, but it's, it's gonna cost you a little bit to get down there. You'll, but when you get there, uh, you can have a guide to where you can go hiking and camping and all that good stuff, set up a tent and stay for days. Because it looks to me as though this place is way out there. Now there's many other places you can go as well, uh, but if I were you, I would stick to what Dark Sky has certified because they measure the light pollution and they know for a fact that you will get clear dark skies at night. So just go on darksky.org and go to International Dark Sky Sanctuaries and Reserves and you'll be able to find a vacation location for all you stargazers out there. Okay, so if you don't follow Dark Sky's suggestions, then follow mine. Places that I know that I know are very dark are Death Valley. You can go to Death Valley, that's in the United States. Pretty much anywhere in North Central Africa, um, in the Sahara Desert, you're going to get a lot of dark skies there. Pretty much anywhere in South America. You can go to Patagonia in the far south of South America. And Patagonia has beautiful mountains and uh, lakes, and it's very, very rugged. But if you can fly to Patagonia and have a guide, uh, because you don't want to probably be out in that wilderness by yourself, so get a guide and see the dark skies down there. So if you're confused on where to go even after this video, then a good rule of thumb is the most light pollution is in the Northern Hemisphere. That's where most of our industrialized cities are. If you go into the Southern Hemisphere, you're going to find many, many places that are very, very dark. So not on this list that I think would be an amazing place to go to, that I've actually been thinking about going to, um, would be Alice Springs, or just north of there. It's right in the middle of Australia. So there's a place called Ayers Rock. It's this monolithic rock, natural rock, out in the middle of nowhere. It, it's in the outback. It is absolutely remote. It's one of the most remote places you can get to. But if you go north of there, you'll be in the central of the Northern Territory uh, in Australia. In order to get there and see these beautiful night skies, 
you would have to fly from New York to Brisbane, Australia, and it'll cost you about 1276 bucks. That's the cheapest ticket I found. It says it'll take 22 hours, so prepared to do some flying. So from Brisbane to Alice Springs, you will actually spend about $417. It'll take you about three hours. So it's gonna take you way over a day to get over to Alice Springs. Then you can see Ayers Rock and then hire a guide um, or a rented vehicle and just drive probably 100 or 200 miles north of there and you will be in the middle of nowhere. I'm telling you, you will be out there. So another place that is not on uh, the dark sky list that I've done some research and it's probably common sense as well. Common sense. Would be the very middle of Africa, um, like the Sahara Desert. Anywhere in the Sahara, um, these countries do not have a lot of light pollution at all. There's not a lot of large developed cities in these countries. So what you'll want to do is just fly into Cairo, Egypt and then catch a flight to places like southern Libya, northern Chad, northern Niger, or southern Algeria, and even uh, eastern, maybe eastern Mali, or even Mauritania. Now, Mauritania is very desertous. There is absolutely nothing. There is no way to travel except, um, I believe there's one train that goes across the middle of Mauritania. So, unless you're willing to go through an old world expedition, do not go to Mauritania. I believe if you're in Northern uh, Niger, that'll probably be a really good area to view the night sky. But keep in mind, because of political beliefs, uh, social situations, economical situations. It might not be safe for Europeans and Americans, Canadians, you know, to go over to those areas. You will definitely, definitely want to get a guide if you plan to go into the middle of the Sahara. First, it's not safe. Second, you have no idea how to speak these languages. And third, it is way too far out in the middle of nowhere for you to do this on your own. You need a guide for safety purposes, for everything. You have to have a guide. Make sure you get a guide. But what you're gonna do, if you wanna go stargazing in the middle of the Sahara, is you are going to fly into Cairo, Egypt. Again, this is in May. From JFK to Cairo, Egypt is going to be $844. And then from there, you'll have to take, you'll just have to find a flight into one of those central countries. So whatever country you pick, fly into Cairo and then have extra costs to then fly into the North Central Africa. And good luck, bring some water with you. <laughs> Another important thing is if you want to do some research on your own and you want to actually see where all the light pollution is on our globe, then a good site to go to would be darksitefinder.com. It's not like dark internet sites. It's finding the dark sites on earth that are the darkest to go stargazing. So go to darksitefinder.com. Com. I will put the link in the description below, but it will pull up a map and it shows where all the light pollution is. And I'm telling you, the Southern Hemisphere, it is dark. So a good rule of thumb, if you want to go stargazing as a vacation, choose somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere. You're going to win every single time. It's been fun hanging out with you guys today. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to keep up with destination videos and travel tips, then remember to follow on Facebook and YouTube and follow on Instagram at World Hippie Travel. And like I always say, guys, don't stop traveling ever. Now go stargazing. There's plenty to see up there. Bye, guys.